Back to CNC Equipment YouTube channel. What are we working on today, Mr. Hunter? Big 460, Bob. Big 460. What are we doing with this big 460? Making it big. Making it big. It's actually a 466. Should you Before know that? So if you guys don't know what we're working on, um, you can go back, click the playlist in the description below. Uh, we're basically building a motor for Hunter's Ford High Boy truck. So he's got a 1977 Ford High Boy. There's what two or three previous videos on this truck. A couple of videos in here. I think this is the third one. Um, basically, I had a 351 modified engine in it. It's kind of worn out and tired. The truck's very clean, come from Wyoming, but you guys can go back and watch those videos. Anyway, this is a 460 that come out of my shop truck. You guys been watching my videos. You know the whole story on that. Um, this was a good running motor. Had about 75,000 miles on it. We took it apart in the uh, first video or second video somewhere in there, and uh, kind of surprised us a little bit, didn't it? So this motor has been bored out 30 thousandths over already and the crank or the rods and the mains have been turned 10 thousandths under. So it's kind of surprised to see that in such a low mileage truck. It's who knows what the history is on it. But the cylinder walls and everything look good. We've not pulled the rest of the pistons out. That's what we're getting ready to work on right now. Uh, we're just trying to get some stuff ordered. So, But uh, anyway, we're going to pull the rest of this apart and then we're going to throw it in our uh, parts washer over there and uh, spray cabinet we got. And... Uh, start building this thing so factory ford crank we've got a whole bunch of parts sitting in here we've ordered up we spent a lot of time doing some research and stuff but uh we went with a bunch of edelbrock stuff we got the performer rpm heads got their intake um we actually got new connecting rods we'll go over that a little bit later we've got a set of pistons here from wiseco uh, we've got holly sniper fuel injection we got all kinds of stuff so it's going to be a pretty sweet little motor According to the Elder Brock stuff, it should be right at uh, 500 horsepower, so we're not uh, not going too crazy, I guess. Maybe that is crazy. Is that crazy? Oh, I don't know. It's something. It's going to be a good little running motor, so. Um, uh, yeah, we've got uh, got plenty to do here, so we're going to start yanking this uh, rods and crank and all that stuff out of there. We're going to put new cam bearings in it, too. Found a little bit of wear in those. Um, we're going to pull the freeze plugs out and give her a good old bath over here are you ready i think so all right we're going to get some of the stuff out of here and we'll bring you guys back in here in a second because this is basically this video is going to be focused on building this motor up so All right, there she is. We wasn't too careful with anything because we are using new rods and pistons. Um, stuff didn't look too bad. You can tell it's definitely been used. Um, bearings have some, that one there is worth through into the copper. Thrust bearing. She's got some use on it. I'm just wondering if that motor had more miles on or maybe it was a used motor and they dropped it in, who knows. But she was running good. You guys remember we did that big smoky burnout with it right before we pulled it out of the uh, shop truck so these rods are pressed on these piston pins what they call a floating pin in this piston um, we don't have the tools here we could probably make something to heat that up and press that out but uh, since parts are somewhat cheap for these we just went with the uh, new connecting rods we'll be showing you those later and our pistons we have are made for the uh, they got the circlip type here so they're made uh, the rods are made to float and the pistons too so hopefully that makes sense at least we think so, but uh, yeah, we're not going to be reusing these rods or pistons. Probably sell those on eBay or something. I don't know. Yeah, not that one. Yeah, somebody dropped yeah, one. Somebody dropped that one. They're good rods, not pistons. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe better. Broke your piston. All right, we got a bunch of cleanup to do. We are going to run these cylinders. Let's roll this thing over, Hunter. Um, we're going to run a hone down these cylinders. We got a new, like a 400 grit ball hone. We're going to give these a little 
a clean job here. We're going to knock all these freeze plugs out. We got new freeze plugs. We got new oil galley plugs too. Um, we got a kit here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. We've got parts everywhere. Yep. This thing come from way up north in Canada. It had a block heater in it, so the ground wire is still on there. They've cut off. Yeah, we got a lot of cleanup to do. Oh, what a mess. We'll get uh, get stuff cleaned up here and uh, bring you guys back along here after we get her out of the hot tank. All right, so I spent a little time looking at these cylinders. And this one over here, I don't know if you guys can see way down in there. There is a groove. Hold this light here, Hunter. If you guys look right here, you can see that little bridge right there. This cylinder, I'm pretty sure it has a sleeve in it. They pressed it down. They cut the old one out and it's pressed down to right there. I want to bring you guys up from the bottom. I don't know if you can see that there or not, but that little sleeve comes down to right there. Very interesting what this motor's went through. We're going to do some uh, super extreme measuring, aren't we? Yep. Make sure everything's in good shape. So, kind of interesting. We'll have to take a peek at that cylinder too. I mean, this thing was running perfect. And everything looked good, so interesting for sure. Spray down. Alright, so we got our cylinders honed out. I did about 30 strokes there on that. If you guys are watching that, we've done both sides, but uh, we're checking the end gap. I measured these cylinders. I actually seen maybe a click tight, if anything. Uh, we just checked the end gap on this one. It's sitting at 18,000. So you want to check this one, Hunter? Mm -hmm. So we don't have the. Oh, you do that. I can't hold the camera and do both. You got to be careful. So we don't. That make super duper piston ring depth checker tools and okay. we're going to do this here because this is all we have we're not professional engine builders so should be we're just going to drop this down and it's going to keep that ring nice and square like that and then we can get a measurement with the uh, feeler gauge here on the end gap Eighteen's right where we're sitting so we need to be what 19 you said yeah 19 on that top 20. ring you said we're gonna go through and check the other ones. I think I can probably throw another 10 strokes of honing in there is what I'm thinking we're gonna do on each one. They pretty much cleaned up. You guys can see that cross hatch in there. It's looking really good. But I think another 10 strokes on each one of them is gonna be perfect. We're gonna go through there and check the rest of the end gaps on those rings. Um, Wise Cover has got a little sheet. It's kind of generic street strip, naturally aspirated. Uh, four and a half thousandths per inch of bore. So we're sitting at a four point Three bore, 4.390. Since we're bored 30 over, this engine will be a 466 when it's all done. So go down in there a little bit deeper. There you go. Check that one. That seems pretty loose in there. Okay. That's on an 18. Pull your. 19 or 20 up. We're just going to go through and check the rest of these. If we got ones a little more, we probably won't hone quite as much. So, again, we're not a machine shop. We're not professional engine builders. So, take it as it is. So, but we're just building this for a nice little street street cruiser truck engine. We're not doing races. We're not putting 100,000 miles on it or nothing like that. So, it's going to be perfect for our application. Not everything has to be race car specs and machine shop done. And, you're not race car, are you? You don't know that. I take it to the drag strip every now and then. Drag strip. That's 19. Is it dragging a little bit? Barely. Yep. Okay, we're gonna get to checking these and we're gonna get honed up and uh, our tank's up to 126 degrees already, so it's about there. And we'll get that thrown in there and uh, go from there.
Alright, parts washer's doing its thing. The block's getting close to being done. We've got uh, the crank, main caps, and uh, oil pan to wash there. But uh, while we're waiting on that, there's always stuff to do, isn't there? Always. We've got to assemble eight pistons. This is why I like building six cylinder diesel motors, bub. So this is a Wiseco. We use a lot of Wiseco stuff and dirt bikes and stuff I have over the years, but I didn't realize they're making uh, Big truck pistons, car pistons, whatever pistons. So this is the Pro Street series, I guess. But these are 30 thousandths over piston. They're flat top. Got the uh, valve relief in them. There's a kit part number. PTS 530A3. I'd say the 3 stands for 30 over. But uh, you can go on and get all the dimensions. That's just what we're using in this application. I had a pretty, pretty reasonable price kit. Um, all this stuff I got from Summit Racing. I am not sponsored by Summit Racing. I will say that. Should be. We should be, yeah. But uh, some of their packaging is not the best, to say the least. Like that box is smashed. Look at this here. This they just throwed a bunch of stuff with no packaging material. These are like the bearings. Are little... These are rod bearings. Those are main bearings. They're just laying in a box. Everything else flop around on them. Look at these spark plugs. But it could have been packaged better. But the big problem was FedEx, wasn't it? You guys see all these parts there's a radiator there's boxes under there stuff over there it all come in one big shipment via FedEx and you guys know you see my lot out here so FedEx the subcontract companies changed hands a few weeks ago they used to come from Terre Haute they was good they come here at lunch get packages dropped off we even had pickups with them never paid for pickups because we're shipping stuff out with them all the time very reasonable but it changed hands coming out of Greenwood, which is closer, but they wouldn't deliver in package till like 8, 9 o'clock at night. So I get a text, 9 o'clock at night, that my packages were delivered. So we've got like $7,000 worth of parts, aluminum heads. I'm going to throw some pictures in here of the uh, boxes. They didn't, Summit didn't put any of the uh, Elderbrock stuff in. They should have double wrapped them. Um, didn't put any of that stuff into another box. This intake come in, as you can see in the picture here sitting in the box no packaging whatsoever with it we've got uh, damage on the corners of it I'm hoping to file it off that one head here it's got damage on the corner of it here too hopefully we can fix that I did reach out to them um, and they were wanting to make it right with me I said how much time is it going to take to fix them um, I've not got back with them yet so anyway we probably could have sent them back but who knows how long that process would have took and waiting on that but it just sucks that two things it's some it's fault a little bit and uh fedex shouldn't be dropping stuff off nine o'clock at night at my gate out there all these packages are sitting out there as you see in that picture literally 15 foot from the road i guarantee you that stuff would have not been there by morning i mean that's ridiculous and propped it all up where everybody could see it too but uh and when they changed hands fedex did they wanted to charge us like i don't know 30 40 dollars a month for pickups and we're shipping you know 10 15 20 packages a day out with them it's just ridiculous so they want to charge me for a pickup we've never paid that before so needless to say we're not shipping to fedex anymore but that's enough for my rant i just wish people would package stuff up better but summit i love summit because their website's awesome um and they get stuff shipped out right away i mean it gets packaged you order the stuff even on a sunday night you get a text and it's packaged a few hours later and it's coming this way so but anyway i just think you need to package a little better and um, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, enough ranting. What we got? Pistons, you got ring kits. We got to start putting them on. Hastings rings, it looks like, come with Wiseco pistons. We'll start with the oil ring. I know they gave instructions on how to set the uh, ring spacing up here, too. We're going to follow that. That's what they call the oil ring, oil expansion ring. So, we've got a lot of work to do. We got uh, new connecting rods over there. So, the old piston style, the rod pressed onto this pin right here. So you have to heat those up and press those off, but uh, they've got new, uh, these are actually Summit Racing's brand. These are rated for a little bit more horsepower than the stock ones. They're, I think, what they call it, H-beam, I'm not sure. But they come with ARP bolts. You can go ahead and open that up. Come with ARP bolts, but the nice thing about these, they're set for a floating pin. So what that means, 
this pin can float back and forth in there. It's not a pressed off fit. And these pistons will use a sir clip to hold them in. Something we're a little more familiar with. But uh, my press fit pin's good. Press fit pin is good. It's just a little harder for the average guy to do. So I'm not sure where these are built at, but they got plenty of oil on them. But yeah, it's gonna go in there, and that pin pin should slide freely in there. So see, it says big block forward. Uh, we're just going with the stock stroke. We're not stroking this thing out. If you guys know the big 460s, you can stroke them out to some serious numbers. You can go into five, I don't know, 514s, 572s, and there's really no clearancing on the block. You just have to uh, get a bigger crank, different rods, and that kind of stuff. So, But we're staying with that stock rod length. I think it's 660. That's probably what that part number means. Um, but, uh, yeah. You ready to get a bunch of piston rings on there? Pretty sure. I don't know. It's going to take a while. Let's get all these opened up, get all that wiped off. Yeah, this is what takes the time. Looks like we got spiral lock retainers here. Lots to do. Did you lose your prime? Oh! I thought I heard it. Thing sits for a She's while. She's thinking about it. She loses her prime. You may have to help her out. She's thirsty. There's a check valve in there and I don't think it's uh, sealing off and holding back our uh, water. Bottle of water usually does it. Ready? Boom! She was just thirsty. All right, we got the block out, sprayed it off good. Got some uh, oil on it so she don't uh, rust, flash rust. So first thing we're gonna do before we sit, sit this back up in the engine stand, uh, we took all the cam bearings out earlier. We got a, I think we'll put a couple cam bearings in from this way maybe. And then we got a freeze plug goes in there. We got some oil galley plugs. Got a little bit of silicone there. We gotta get, get her cleaned up fun over here. Oh, it's great. Mr. Hunter's loading up the uh, pistons, putting the rings in the correct orientation. They got a way they all have to go. And then we've got to space all the ring gaps a certain way they got uh, on here. So we're going to put the rods on next and then uh, we'll space all the rings. Is that right? That way the rings stay put. You've still got a lot to do yet. You should have bought a little four cylinder or something. Yeah. Sucks data. <laughs> so I've been over here cleaning the block up, up, get it all dried off, got all the oil off of it. You guys can see that line right there. That's where that sleeve is. That's either number, I don't know how Ford numbers, either number five or number one cylinder. But we were talking at lunch. I just wonder if that uh, engine had a failure in that one cylinder, and that's why it got bored out and went to the machine shop and all that stuff. It may have dropped a valve or something, but it's going to take a peek at the heads over here. We're not going to reuse these heads because it was electronic fuel injected, but it's curious. I don't know which head's which. The guy seen any damage or not. Could have had a valve or something drop. Messed that one cylinder up. And uh, caused it to be sleeved. Who knows what happened there, but it was way up in northern Canada and things get cold. Something could have got brittle and broke on the startup. So who knows what happened to it, but something definitely happened in that cylinder causing them to put a sleeve in it. And like I say, I doubt the rest of the motor was probably bad yet, but being it's at the machine shop, 30 over is a common thing and 10 on the over on the rest of the bearing. So but, uh, I'm not worried about that sleeve. It's been in there a lot long. It should be fine. So um, before we put it on the engine stand, Hunter and I did drive a couple cam bearings in there. I'm going to put, uh, we got three more to put in here. We put the freeze plug and stuff in the back of there because we can't get that anymore so I am going to put some cam bearings in while Hunter's working on pistons forever. Alright I bought this tool just to put these cam bearings in. We're always doing this kind of stuff so I went ahead and bought a tool. It is a... So it's I think it's a... Yeah Lyle I don't know how you say it. 
18,000 is the part number. Well, it comes with different sizes and everything. Um, we've got the longer, longer rod here. We don't really need that long now. Like I say, we put two in from that way, just trying to make it a little easier on us. So, main thing we got to watch out for. We got oil holes to line up here on uh, on these, so that's kind of important there. So, let's see if we can't get some lined up here. Right, that's a handy little tool. We got our oil hole lined up in all of them. We usually just turn a piece of round stock out and make a bearing driver, don't we? Yeah. Not anymore. All right, I'm gonna roll that thing back over and start working on our main bearing so we're ready to put that crank in shortly. Alright, been working on connecting rods, got the bearings in those, got the bearings in the uh, main caps here. You guys can see I got the uh, rear main seal in there, I got it offset about 3 eighths of an inch, got a little bit of silicone on the ends, same way in the block over there. We're going to go ahead and drop this crank on here before we knock it off the table. Been working on pistons, it's got those spiral lock, uh, spiral lock keepers that Hunter really likes. These things here, you got to wind them in, there's two on each side, they kind of suck, not going to lie. Did you find some uh, rod bolts? Those are head bolts. No way they're in this little box. What's it say? There's some... I don't know. Pick up. I don't think that's it. Open that one up. I'm pretty sure that's it. Stand up. we got all kinds of ARP bolts here. So we're gonna drop the crank in the next. He's looking for the bolts. I think what they're trying to tell you, it has the stand for the sump on the oil pump. That's what they're trying to tell you. So our Summit rods have ARP bolts in those already. Also, we're gonna be following all the torque procedures for ARP stuff, not the normal factory stuff because their bolts are a little different. Mr. Tucker's over here working on his truck today, on Saturday. What would you do to your truck, Mr. Tucker? My AC's gone. What? Compressors don't fall. What are you having for lunch? Chicken on the beach. Chicken on the beach. You mean your 30 year old air compressor quit finally? Yeah, in my window. In your window. Sucks having an old truck, doesn't it? But how's your exhaust doing? My exhaust? Your exhaust. Remember we fixed it in the video? It's the last time people seen this truck. Oh, your exhaust manifold. Oh yeah. It's all good, right? So he's putting a new AC compressor in. I think it's leaking, so the Freon's leaking out slowly. We're gonna put a new dryer on it, but it's all original stuff. It's actually from 93, his truck's 94, but my dad bought it in 93. All right, are you ready? Did you find some bolts? You're getting grumpy over here. Oh, yelling at me? There's your oil pump standoff. Remember I took a picture where that goes? Are you manhandling that yourself? I mean, I did all the way over here when it's 140 degrees. <laughs> you want me to help you with this end or you got it? I got it, bub. It's got to be level. Oh gosh, you're scaring uh, me. We grew it. <laughs> okay. I got the bearings in there and assembly lube in here already. I'll help you with this end. You got your hand in the way, don't you? Yeah. You alright? Yep. 
I don't know if you guys can see that little green piece. I got a piece of what they call plastic gauge down there. We're going to set this um, main cap on here. This is actually the thrust bearing too. We're going to tighten it down and check our bearing clearance. Remember this is a ten thousandths under crank. The rods are in the main. So I'm going to tighten this down. We're reusing the old bolts right now. If everything looks good, we'll put our new ARP studs in there. See that plastic gauge right there? We should be in that one and a half thousandths range. Looks like we're sitting about one and a half to two, kind of in between. I'd say one and three quarters. All right, 0.5 or a half to two and a half thousandths is within range, so we're right in the middle of that. One and a half is perfect. We're sitting about one and three quarters, best I can tell. So we're gonna call that good enough. She'll be fine. Put some lube back on here. Go ahead and torque this down for good. We get all these stuck in here and torque down. Mr. Hunter still playing the spiral locks. Fun times. All right, he's got everything torqued down. We kind of did that in three steps. We did the first step with the uh, impact, and then we went to, uh, what did we go, 70 foot-pounds? 65. 65, then we went to 100. So we're checking crankshaft in play on here. The thing, the book calls for four to eight thousandths. We're sitting right there at 50 right now. I can move it the right way. We got about four, four thousandths or so. So I think we're good on that. That's uh, towards the new specs on that end of it. So that's good. Um, yeah, Hunter's gonna keep playing with spiral locks. We gotta get all these put on, and then we'll start dropping these dudes in the hole. All right, did you figure it out, Hunter? By the end of them, I got her figured out. It's got all the double spiral locks on each side. They're not too bad once you figure them out. So. Uh, We've been lubricating the wrist pins and stuff. We're using a ZDDP braking oil from Summit. It's got some zinc and stuff in it. I know our new camshaft's going to require that. Been cleaning these bores out. Wiped them out two or three times with brake cleaner and a white rag. Got those all clean. And then I put some oil on a rag and uh, got those all pre-lubricated and ready to go. These things are looking nice. Um, he's getting the piston rings lined up. The correct orientation. For one side, the weird thing about these, I'd rather build a six-cylinder diesel motor any day. Oh, any day bro. These things take so much longer. They're a little bit more complicated on these Fords. I don't know how the other brands are, but uh, these connecting rods are actually offset. They're made for a chamfer on one side to chamfer up against the crankshaft. So basically, you have the chamfer on the outside of two opposing cylinders like that. So basically, four pistons sit one way and four the other, if that makes sense. So. On this side, which would be the driver's side, the exhaust port is going to be forward on each one. And then when you come over here on this side, the intake port is going to be forward. So the exhaust manifold is going to sit one hole back, kind of, or valve back. So I hope that makes sense. But most all the V8s are that way. Confusing. What you got? I think this one's right. We got to get a ring compressor out and stuff and put oil on there. Okay. We'll get to, we gotta get one in the hole. We'll kind of put it in there dry first, Hunter, and uh, put oil on the piston. But we gotta check that clearance on the uh, bearing. All right, drop the first piston in over here. That's actually the hole that had the sleeve in it. We're checking the uh, uh, bearing clearance here. You guys can see we might got some of the plastic gauge on there, but we are sitting. You guys can see that. Get over here. Too much sun. You guys can see that right there. 
put this right there. It's the same width as that one thousandths mark right there. So we're supposed to be between, what did I say, 0.8 and 1.5. So we're sitting right, right in the middle, maybe even on the tight side. So we're in good shape. Good, good shape. Hunter's measuring bolts. These are ARP bolts that come with these summit rods. It gives us a, a torque specification on there. So, What's, where's it measured from? Your bolt, bolt length is always from the end of your bolt to under the shoulder right yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. How would you measure that? Do that way. One point eight. One point eight. One point eight hundred. What's the diameter of them? Seven sixteenths. Yeah, seven sixteenths. Yeah, point four three seven. And then ARP. Is those ARPs, aren't they? Yep. ARP eighty seven forty. So Cap screw. Sixty three. Pound feet with the molly lube. So that's what you got to torque them to. All right. All right. We're getting ready to put another one in. We've got a 4.390 piston ring installer. This is from Total Seal RC4390. I've never used one of these, but these are super nice. They got a big taper put into it. A lot better than the uh, other ring compressors. Just gotta get your ring started here. And they're started, and that's it. There you go, Tucker. Tucker can be cameraman. Hunter, you can't mm -hmm. get your cap. Oh, we gotta put lube on here. Assembly lube. Let me let that in there. Okay. Go in here. Yep. Isn't it? Seems like it. Uh, put the rod cap on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Number to number. Yep. You just snug them with that and we'll come through and torque them later. He's got the ARP assembly lube on there. your first torque. Nope. Okay. Boom. Just that easy. Now you got six more to do. Stupid V8. Stupid V8. Eight pistons in there, bud. It's getting heavier, bud. Getting heavier. So we're gonna go through here and torque these down. The ARP specs. Then I think our goal is we're gonna get the oil pump and the pickup put on there, oil pan, and then we're gonna paint the block here tonight, right? Yeah. And that's our plan. And then uh, tomorrow we'll come back and throw the shiny parts on it. All right, Mr. Hunter got all this torqued up. He's putting a brand new high volume oil pump on here. Got a gasket down there. Not gonna reuse the old one. We are gonna reuse the old pickup.
Hmm. What are we doing? Tucker dropped the oil pan. I haven't touched your truck on it. I don't plan on it. <laughs> I think somebody uh, set the motor on the oil pan and dented it. I think someone ran over an elk. <laughs> and just stay up here. So it was barely hitting our oil pickup here. She's golden now. Where'd that wool plug go? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see it. Fine. We'll hit it a couple more times, honey, and you should be good. Just like brand new, right? I don't know about that. Custom hole right on the table. Right there. I like it. You like it? I like it. That looks factory. All right, we're good. All right, all right. We put the oil pan on there temporary. We used that uh, four-piece gasket. One thing we're doing today, we're going to get this thing prepped for paint. Uh, Hunter's getting some uh, retaining. I have to overlay that. No, just don't go too much. We can trim it. Hunter's got some uh, sleeve retaining compound on those freeze plugs. And then we're going to give those the old taparoo. Is it on straight? Yeah, hit the top side. Top side a little bit. Good. Yeah, we'll get her squared up here. So we're just going to go through the process. we got some Made in the USA freeze plugs, and uh, Tucker's taping off the deck. We're going to cover that all that up and uh, get her sanded. And what color are we painting it? Pink. Pink. All right, can't wait to see that. All right, Hunter's got uh, a coat of primer on. He's putting his first coat of Ford blue on. How's it looking? Good. I changed nice. my mind about pink. The pink. No pink. You see the gray primer there. We've got uh, a couple more colors. It's kind of the end of the day. We're kind of just throwing parts everywhere. Got a new water pump. Got our water neck primered. Uh, crankshaft weight. And I got uh, the aluminum cover for the timing cover. We've got to get it painted too so we can get that oil paint on tomorrow. We just kind of got it on our temporary right now, but we're going to keep on painting blue and we'll be back here in a second. All right, we got a couple coats of blue and everything. We're using the deeper color engine enamel. It seems to paint really well. I've used it before. This is the uh, DE1621 Old Ford Blue. Same color I painted my shop truck motor with, but that uh, seems to cover well. Usually about three coats or so and it dries quick. But uh, we're going to put uh, another coat or two on this stuff and we'll be back in the morning. It's getting late here tonight. We got everything ready to go, so hopefully we can get our heads. Uh, we got camshaft heads, intake, and then we got a measure for our push rod length tomorrow. So we got timing chain. This is a push rod checker or length machine. So we'll uh, we'll be back in the morning. How'd she look, bud? Warm. Beautiful. Nice tape job. We even painted our oil, temporary oil pan gasket. That's right. All right. What are we doing first? Now the oil pan's got to come back off. I think we're ready for the camshaft, aren't we? I think so. We got to get it all set off. So we have a uh, Edelbrock cam. It's a 7167. Again, kind of going with that performer RPM. Oh, did you miss a piece? You missed a piece. Oh. Got it. See? Don't worry. So you guys might see, we actually put the gasket on here. We put tape on it and we put the gasket and we traced the outline. They cut it out with the X-Acto knife. So on these sharp edges, we'll just run the tape off and we'll take like a hammer or something, steel, and just run across that edge and just cut that tape. It makes it nice and simple and quick and all that. But yeah, we're putting this uh, 7167 Elderbrock cam in here next. We'll get it opened up and uh, see what we got. Look how nice and boxy stuff. Got lifters. We're just using flat tappet lifters. I think Elderbrock owns comp cams apparently because that's a comp cam. 
<laughs> so this lift or cam's got a little bit of lift. We'll get the cam card out here and see. All right, so there's the specs on the cam for anybody that's wondering. Um, it's a comp cam. 34000-5, 429-460 Duration at 50s, 234 in the intake and 244 in the exhaust. So might be a little rowdy. Might have some idle to it. So they can reshape these cams. You guys don't know. I don't know a whole lot about them, but it's all on how they shape these cams, how far these lobes are, how long the valves stay open, how much you lift, and all that good stuff. So. Um, they sent us assembly lube with this, of course, since we're using uh, flat tappet hydraulic lifters there. Um, we got to put this on the lobes and then we'll put assembly lube on these journals and slide it in there. You ready? I think so. All right, before we put that camshaft in there, we forget about it. You guys remember when we tore this motor apart, I pulled the distributor out and uh, it was kind of galled up in there. They had a little bit of damage on the distributor. The block's fine, but uh, we've got two oil ports right here. We took the plugs out when we washed it, but did a little reading on the internet. Some people recommended um, drilling a hole in this oil passage so it kind of squirts oil down in there. So we drilled a little tiny hole, if you guys can see that there, through this oil galley plug. That's going to allow oil to squirt right on this distributor gear, keep it all lubricated, and it'll just run right back down the pan. So. Since we're putting a high volume oil pump on it, we should not lose any oil pressure by a little tiny hole in there. So just a little little tip and trick here. So really the only way it gets oil that I know of is slinging up from that camshaft and from down below. So there's really no oil that gets to that little gear. So yep, Hunter sealing up the uh, galley, oil galley plugs there. So we're gonna get those in there before we put the uh, camshaft in there. So we don't cover it up with all the gears and stuff. So. The end thrust in plate on there. Next thing we're going to do is put the uh, timing chain in. I got to do a little bit of reading, see how we got to time this thing. This is the Elder Box set. It does have uh, standard zero. It's got four degrees advanced and four degrees retarded. So we're probably going to put it in the standard right now. And we'll have to do some checking on uh, on the timing on that. So we'll be back. All right, we got that all on there. We got number one cylinder up top, top dead center. What do we put in your piston here out there? Some putty? Not quite putty. So we put putty in these valve reliefs on the piston. Next thing we're going to try to check is the uh, piston to valve clearance. So you guys see we've got dishes in these pistons for clearance, but we want to verify that. So we're going to put a head on bare with no gasket. We know our compressed thickness of our gasket is about 40,000. So what we'll do, we'll try it. I think I've got some push rods here. It may work. Um, we got to put some oil on that so it don't stick to the valves, Hunter. You want to put oil in here too? No, not yet. We're going to put a little oil in here so this putty doesn't stick to the valves. But uh, what we're going to do is try to get set up with a couple push rods in here and uh, turn the engine over and make sure we got good clearance. So when we pull the head back off, we should be able to measure the depth of the putty. The valve should make an indentation in there. So in theory, that sound good? Sure. Everything should work, but being these are kind of, you know, we've got different pistons. Stuff's not stock, aftermarket heads, different cam. Our valve lift could be too much and actually hitting these pistons. We hope it's not, but we want to check it to be sure. Um, rule of thumb is you're supposed to have about a hundred thousandths of clearance. So we'll uh, get this head stuck on here. All right, we got a head in there. We got a couple of the uh, original 460 push rods. They are not the right diameter, which we know that, but uh, they're 516ths. So we're going to be upgrading to 3.8s. We got our trick flow roller rockers. They're 1.73 ratio. So Hunter's going to turn that over a few times. And hopefully cycle those valves. We got a exhaust valve going down now. Intake valves going down. I go around a couple times and we'll pop it head off and check that uh, clearance. 
I don't think they even touched it, Dick. Which is fine. It means we're in good shape. Because those dishes aren't, uh, that one's not relieved very much at all. So we're fine. High five. Got our new Felpro head gaskets on there. Hunter is uh, lubing up the AR ARP head bolts with their lube. I've been following on this stupid head for about 15 minutes here. You guys can see that corner. It's got smashed. I filed it off flat. That one there has been smashed. I think it'll be fine, but it's just not right. And it's just on this one head. It sucks, but. Should have been packaged better and shipped better. I think it's both people's fault. All right, we're about ready to stick heads on here. Alright, is it getting smoky again because of the Canadian wildfires? I'm pretty sure it is. It is. I know it's that earlier. Oh, Canada, you're smoking us out. So, we've been messing. We finally got the timing right. We're four degrees advanced, right? Yeah, after two, two hours, hours later. Yeah. We, we learned a lot. We kept messing with it. We went back to retarded and we ended up reading the wrong number on the, the cam card, didn't we? Yeah. We learned. Sometimes you got to read the right number of things out, but we got it within one degree of what it's supposed to be, which they said that's good, right? But we ended up at four degrees advance. We put it at uh, uh, zero. It was about two degrees off, I think. What is it? It was two. When we went to zero, it went to two degrees oh, the other way. Yeah. Went to four degrees advance. It's only one degree out, so we we feel good about that. So we've got our crank sitting on number one TDC, which means top dead center on our number one cylinder. So. While it's still set, we're gonna get this timing cover on it, um, that harmonic balancer, and we'll mark the balancer for number one TDC so we know where it's at in the future. Okay. How's that sound? Ooh, conservation officers after somebody. Yeah, I saw him pass this one. Somebody's shooting deer illegally. Okay. That doesn't look right. You got it backwards there, bub? Um, how about there that? You go. Perfect. We need the timing cover. All right, we got a uh, brand new Gates water pump on there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we got our timing cover on there first, then the uh, water pump. Got new ARP bolts in there. One thing I was telling Hunter, there's no dowel rods to um, actually line this up, and you can actually move this thing a little bit. You guys see that left or right? So we're gonna put in this, um, it's actually what they call the balancer. So any 460 from I think 79 and later was balanced externally. That's what this weight is. I think they call it the tomahawk weight, but we're gonna go ahead and put it on there. That's where the seal rides at, and that's gonna help line this thing up. We just went to tighten this thing up, and then there's a chance of it not lining up properly. So, we'll get that on there. Snug everything up. And be ready for the wool pan. All right, I did buy a whole complete gasket kit. It come with a four-piece oil pan seal, but I opted for the Ford Racing. Got a one-piece seal here. It's a little bit better setup. We did uh, put some silicone in these corners and where it comes over in this timing cover rail, but I'll show you guys. See that one's all in one piece. It's actually got like copper crush washers so you can't tighten it too tight. Here is the original style gasket they used to have it's four pieces basically but I'm thinking that's going to be a little better setup plus this original style I don't have those little copper crush things on it but that uh that's a ford racing what part number is that if somebody's interested ford racing m6710 a460 there it is anybody's looking uh no just make sure it's clean I kind of like uh, like how it's made. It's well worth the money. 
for sure. All right, we got the harmonic balancer on there, even lined up at zero right where we thought it would, so we must have done something right. We had the motor sitting at number one TDC, so it's confirmation we're good there. All right, we got those lifters in there. One more thing we're gonna do here before uh, I think we quit this video. We got to measure for push rods. That's what this whole day's all been about. So um, we've got to get a uh, push rod checker in there. We got stock ones too, but uh, we're upgrading to 3 8 diameter. The stock ones are 5 16. So. They going this way? Uh, sure. Okay. Why don't you get it close to the stock link first before you put that in there? So you guys seen we had those roller rocker tips here, or rockers earlier. What we're going to do, we're going to mark the top of these valves here with uh, some red dicom fluid that I've had for like 25 years. Yeah. We're going to mark this and basically we want that roller tip to be centered right on this stem so we'll um, turn the engine over a few times and make sure that's right in that center. If it's not we can lengthen or shorten that push rod out to get it pushing right on the center of that stem there. So, Alright we've got a red dicom on there. Hunter's putting on the roller rockers. So we just put two stock push rods in there now. It's going to give us a baseline. Um, and go ahead and get your nuts. So we're going to tighten these down to the till they touch and then crank them uh, a half a turn, 180 degrees, to set the lash on those. And we'll turn her over here and see what kind of markings we got. I don't know how well you guys can see, but the center of that roller rocker is not quite in the center of the stem. We've not rotated it yet, but. Uh, Telling me we need to adjust our push rod length a little bit, but go ahead and turn it over and that'll put a mark in there. How's that starter going there for you? Great, bub. So we got a valve compressing now. And that would be the exhaust valve. Now the intake's opening up. If I go back to number one TDC here. Or zero. There you go. Now we can take these off and check it. Alright, so I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, we got that little shiny mark right there. It's on the inside of the valve, I guess we'll call it. So we're off off about a sixteenth of an inch there, but uh, we think we need to le lengthen these rods out about three eighths of an inch. So we have a adjustable rod there. You want to crank that about three eighths longer than that. We'll put that in there, uh, recheck it. And see how that goes for us. Just a touch. All right, we put our push rod about 8.800, and as you can see, we're almost in the center, maybe a touch long, but it's not too far off. I think we need to probably get on summitracing.com and see what uh, their push rods come in exact lengths, and we'll set that to that here. Wouldn't that be a smart idea? That'd be smart. Yeah. We'll go look up and see what they say, but we're getting getting real close there. All right, we got some push rods ordered from Summit. What length we go with? 8.750. Yeah. We got those ordered. They'll be here in a couple days. We're going to wait uh, until we get those before we put our intake on. Got some super sweet valve covers going on here, don't we? Oh, yeah. There are all kinds parts. of cool stuff. This thing's going to be looking sharp when it gets all done. But uh, I know this video is getting stretched out a little long. But uh, next video will be us putting this thing in the truck, right? Hopefully. Maybe buttoning the top end up there a little bit um, when those parts show up. So push rods we've got the uh, rockers to go in there valve covers intake all kinds of cool stuff you still got stuff to do yet uh, Hunter and Kevin worked on the truck you painted most of it painted the frame undercoated it uh, painted the firewall back factory color I'll throw a few clips of that in here you guys take a little peek at that real quick but uh, it's looking sharp for sure you still got some more brake work to do on the front of it transmission we got to reseal it gaskets we're waiting on the clutch and stuff to come in for it. I know the headers are going to be a couple weeks yet, but uh, we're getting there. Or you're getting there, so. Anyway, hope you guys like this uh, little mod motor build video. We're not professionals by no means, so there's plenty plenty of professional motor videos out there. But I uh, thought you guys might like a little different change of pace. I've not built a gas engine up, I don't know, ever. Maybe once or twice in my life. 232.
yeah I've done a few little jeep motors but uh i've done a couple small block fours but it's been a long time i'd rather do a big old six cylinder diesel engine any day oh any day we would have had two or three built by now so a little more stuff going on and when you start messing custom parts and stuff you gotta do a lot more checking cams and heads and but uh, we learned a lot both of us didn't we Oh, that's all that matters so. by the time we got the pistons together yeah yeah those took a while but uh anyway we appreciate you guys watching if you did like it give us that big thumb up hit that big thumbs up button down below click that button it helps us out a lot so that's right hey is that it we're dead and if you want to see more videos on this truck make sure you're subscribed there's a playlist for it you go back and watch those other videos you've not seen them and i'm sure there'll be more videos to come on it so it's going to make a super nice motor for sure so i'll be excited to here you fired up for the first time but uh yeah appreciate everybody watching we'll catch you guys next time Bob, I'll catch you. you ain't oh. cutting me what do you think you're done in here you got it all down it smells like z-bart in here how'd you do Woo. look at that shiny firewall Hey, the color don't match. Good. Looks good.